Well, I've had a lot of questions from main trappers asking about these Lynx exclusion devices that we have to use to trap for uh, Fisher, Martin, Weasel, basically to use body grip traps on dry land. Here uh, in the state of Maine, we are required to use uh, one of these devices. Um, uh, very basic. If you go to the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife website and go to the trapping section of the page, you will find uh, details uh, going through the trapping laws and you'll see exactly how they have to be measured and, and what the size they can be and what they have to be made out of and everything. So I'm not here to talk about uh, all the legal specifications of these devices, but I do want to show you what I use because I've gone through and done, I've tried a variety of different sizes and shapes and, and materials that have not worked very well uh, and some that have worked better than others. So uh, anyway, the fact that a lot of people have questions, here it is, uh, hopefully a few answers. So this is the first device. This one is for 120 body grip traps, uh, four and a half by four and a half inches. Uh, this can also be used, this same style can also be used for 155s. Uh, but the jaw spread, the, the jaw spread cannot be greater than five inches by five inches. I believe that's an inside jaw spread measurement. Um, so this box is made out of wood. You can make it out of wire as well. This is actually a wood wire hybrid. Uh, I was making them all out of wood and I did not like some, some aspects of that. So mine are made out of one inch pine. I mill it on my sawmill at an inch and then you have some kerf from the mill, a little bit of shrinkage. So it's like three quarters to seven eighths of an inch uh, approximately. Uh, but I just make these boards and there are four boards that are used to make this device. Uh, two of them measure seven and a half inches wide. Two of them measure six inches wide. So these two sideboards are six inches wide, one by six. These two are one by seven and a half. I put the one by sixes on the inside, the one by seven and a half over and under those. Um, and these are 30 inches long. Uh, so boards one by six by 30, one by seven and a half by 30 to make your box. Um, what that does is it gives you an inside diameter of your box that's going to measure, uh, it can vary a little bit, but for me, uh, it measures about five and three quarter inches by about six inches. Um, so uh, it can comfortably fit a four and a half by four and a half inch uh, jaw spread trap, a 120, and leave room for the trap to be able to function. Uh, I have had some situations where the trap jaws have been caught on the inside of the box or the springs get caught and jammed up. Uh, it's not, it's not always perfect, but this is the best I've been able to figure out so far. Um, this is the entrance to the device, and the entrance can only measure four inches by four inches or less. This one is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, and I'm using a one inch mesh 16 gauge metal wire that's PVC coated. This is like kind of like lobster trap wire and uh, I bought a big roll of this. Um, the, the wire, if you use wire with wood, it has to be wrapped around at least two sides of the box. So I got these big heavy duty staples. Uh, there are wires wrapped over this side and then it's wrapped over at the bottom again and I get it stapled all the way around just to make sure. This is rugged, you can't pull this wire off, you can't bend it, you can't move it, it's rugged. So a Lynx is not gonna be able to, to pop that out. Um, the back of the box, you can have a solid back, but I have all one inch by one inch wire mesh. And the reason I did that is because when I had the solid box, I think I had a lot of uh, Martin and Fisher that weren't really, they were, they were going by the set and they weren't really, they could smell something, but they couldn't quite identify where the bait was. Uh, this way they can look in the back, they can hang around the back, they can try to reach in, they realize they can't get to it, and then they'll eventually come around uh, to the front of the box. Uh, the entrance has to be at least 18 inches from the trap. So what I do is this 30 inch piece, I cut at about 19, 19 and a half inches. Uh, and, and so the first piece is usually around 19 inches. And that's what I got here. So, so this entire front piece is those same dimensions I mentioned and it's 19 inches long. Um, it's like 18 is minimum required, but I want to be a little safer just in case my trap moves around a little bit or something. I always like to be safe 
uh, not get in trouble for uh, no reason. Um, but this entire portion, this this whole section of box, the only thing this does is exclude links. So back in the day when we were trapping with cubbies here in Maine, uh, this bottom piece is all we would use. We'd just put some bait back there, we'd set our trap in the front of the cubby, Martin or Fisher would come in, boom, get caught. Um, this, this is Link's exclusion part of the device. So I got a hinge here. I used, I used to use some rubber hinge material. I still have a bunch of them. It was like a, it was like a belting material. It was really heavy duty. It's too flexible. It's not, not very good because what I found was this rubber was on here and it was screwed down really good and solid. But if the trap was set on uneven ground, sometimes it would allow one side of the box to go up, to move up or down. And my uh, slot for my springs sometimes would not be lined up and a spring could get caught. I've lost several animals. I've probably lost three or four Martin Fisher because of that. So big mistake, I won't do it again. Uh, I went on to eBay and I bought these heavy duty, uh, they're just regular uh, door hinges, uh, all metal door hinges. And I think I got 30 of them for 40 bucks or 40 of them for 40 bucks. Um, they're somewhere around a dollar a piece, and uh, that, that works very well. The slots. The slots can be up to uh, one and a half inches tall by seven and a half inches long, and that's just the slots for your springs to poke out the side of the device. Uh, and I have uh, played with these a lot. Um, this one is, I actually have it six and a half inches long just because I didn't need it to be much longer. Uh, I didn't need it to be the full amount because one, 120s you just don't need to. Um, and you notice I have two different size slots here. So when I was having the issues with these areas not lining up very well, uh, the trap springs would, would start to, as the trap was set off, the springs would come out to the slot and occasionally it could get caught where the two slots kind of, the two portions of the box come together. Um, I can't take that risk anymore. I can't be losing animals. So what I've done is I've made this first slot where the springs are when the trap is set, that is half of the width of this second slot. So what that means is if this shifts up or down, if the either of these shifts a little bit, there's still gonna be plenty of opening on this side for that spring to travel right through and allow the trap to close. So yeah, of course, one of those on each side for the trap springs. Um, and then for to close the trap because you got so you, you got this open you're gonna stuff your bait in the back here uh, actually this I just took this out from outside it still has bait in it um, and then you're gonna set your trap you're gonna pull the, the uh, springs back and have it set right in here and then you're gonna swing the exclusion part back over and now you gotta shut this because uh, you don't want a chance that an animal could tip this to the side and open it up and get caught in the trap it's got to be secure so what I do is I drill a screw on each side of the box, uh, one on the bait side and one on the exclusion side or the entrance side. And uh, I wrap a wire around one screw and that stays there. And then I, when I go to close it, I make a few wraps of the wire on, on the other side and that pulls that shut. And to be safe, I do it on both sides of the exclusion device. So that is the Lynx exclusion device for 120 boxes that I use. Uh, again, it measures seven and a half inches on the outside diameter. It's seven and a half inches by eight inches by 30 inches long. I can fit about 30 of them in the back of my Ford Ranger pickup. Um, and uh, they are kind of bulky and heavy to carry around, but better than not trapping. This is the big box. Uh, this one is actually designed, I have it designed for 160 size devices. Uh, the design I have for 220s, which are seven inch by seven inch opening jaw spread, uh, I, I almost never use those anymore. I have a few, but they have to be a little bit bigger than this typically. Um, but this is the 160 style device and there's two, go on the state website and look at the rules in the law book because uh, this is only one of the two allowed designs. So you could do this a different way if you want to, uh, but this is the one that I, I've, um, I've decided to go with. And actually, if I'm comparing these two devices, if you've heard me talk before, I've got a lot of opinions on this. Um, th I only use these 120s for the most part as I'm phasing all these big ones out because I've had, uh, I've had way too many refusals 
uh, from both Martin and Fisher from these boxes. So um, at least for the next few years, um, if we're still required to use these things, I'm gonna try to phase these out and use more of these. Uh, the main reason is uh, this entrance is kind of like a two-parted entrance. Uh, because there's a bigger trap there, uh, they, the regulations do not allow to have you to have an entrance on, on the opposite end of the box where an animal can see all the way to the bait. So because of that, you have to make a 90 degree angle in this box. And that requires um, a baffle or a, a lip right here um, on the side of the box. Uh, and so it's a bit more complicated design, uh, but this is made out of that same one inch pine boards that I milled. And the boards are uh, seven and a half inches on the sides and nine and a half inches on the top and bottom. So seven and a half by one, or one by seven and a halfs, and one by nines. So you put those together. Um, you've got the same deal with, uh, with your slots. Um, your slots can be one and a half inches by seven and a half inches. These ones are uh, six and a half inches by an inch, just because that's what I wanted to make. Um, I drilled a bunch of holes here. I don't like that de design. I drilled a bunch of holes in the back as well. Um, I don't like that. I would replace those with wire if I was to rebuild this box. Um, in the front, uh, you have this opening that you make by, this, is, this side piece is kind of cut into an L shape. So there's a portion cut out of this as it's screwed in the side. Then you have some yen. I would make that wire if I was going to do it again. I, I won't be doing these again more than likely. Um, and this piece is solid, this piece is solid, and the bottom is solid. And then you have uh, a, a piece in here that is kind of, it's a, it's a big L-shaped piece on the inside that closes up the, uh, the diameter of this entrance. So uh, I have, I don't have my rule book right in front of me, but I think the opening can be uh, like, uh, it's somewhere around six inches by seven inches or five inches by six inches. Uh, the two openings have different requirements on how, how big they can be. Um, but this one I have is about five and a half inches by six and a half inches. I think, I think this one allowed six by seven and then it was uh, maybe five by six on the inside. But don't quote me on that. Look at your book. Um, always check your book. This is just under six by just by about seven. So maybe maybe that's what they are. Maybe they're six by, uh, oh no, it's not. It's, uh, it's just under six by five and a half. So maybe it's five by six on the inside and six by seven on the outside. But either way, the animal has to go in this entrance and turn 90 degrees and then go all the way to the end of the box to get to the bait. Uh, I have caught, how many have I? I've caught two, two fishers and uh, three or four, three Martin in these, and I've caught dozens um, of Fisher and Martin in, in those boxes. So a uh, huge difference in, in effectiveness. Uh, what I have had some luck with is, is using a gland lure in the box, a mustelid gland lure. It seems to uh, make the animals more likely to want to go in uh, to this device. But uh, either way, I hope that helps. I'll try to answer any more questions that you might have. Uh, this is that belted material that I was using that I've replaced with hinges because you, you can see, see, how, see how much that can move. Um, and when it's closed, it won't move as much, but if that moves like that and your springs are back here and they go to, to the trap goes to get set off, the springs can get caught right there and uh, you can miss an animal. We put a lot of work into this, getting out on the trap line, trying to do it right, trying to catch animals, a lot of invested time and money little silly thing like that uh, to cost you an animal it really is a bummer. So anyway, that's Link's Exclusion Devices currently required in Maine. And if this is video, once this gets a few years old, these may not, these may have totally changed. So uh, always check your books and, and your law book and see what you can and can't do. But for now, this is what we use. Thanks.